What is life like as a junior doctor with a new baby on their first day back from paternity leave? In this video, you'll find out the honest truth with some bonuses added in. My day starts pretty abruptly at around 5am. I've always wondered how to make sure to get up when my alarm goes off and now I know the key is the baby alarm clock. There's no snooze option, it gets louder and louder the longer you leave it and it's about as comfortable to listen to as a nuclear test. In case I manage to stay tired through that, the fresh scent of baby poo makes light work of my drowsiness, shocking me into consciousness. This Wednesday I get fairly lucky that Layla calms down after a nappy change with the help of some human origami, so I take her expressed breast milk out of the fridge to help it warm up and get to brush the chompers and do my skincare routine. This is quite important for me as I had bagged acne in my teen years, meaning I needed isotretinoin to clear it up. Evidence generally suggests four phases of a skincare routine, cleansing, toner, treatment and moisturiser. Moisturisers should have sunscreen. You may ask why I need it if I live in the UK. Good question. That's why I go for the minimum with SPF 15. If I lived somewhere a bit warmer, I'd probably want to ramp that up. Then just as I'm about to eat, Layla decides that she will first, so I put the eggs on low heat and get started. Now I've tried adapting my usual morning routine without losing too many of the good habits I've built. So I read my Kindle while feeding her here. Today I'm reading $100 million Offers by Alex Hormozzi. Very good book for the entrepreneurially inclined of you. At this point, I learned about how competing on value and not price is essential to create a sustainable business. If you're interested in learning more from this number one bestseller in business sales, I can drop a link for the audiobook free with a trial of Audible down in the description box. Following the link also helps to support the channel as it is an affiliate link and I do get a small kickback. So thank you for your support. She has about half her bottle and falls asleep while eating. So I give her a quick burp. Didn't dare to put her down in case the foghorn starts sounding again. And while I have a moment of quiet, I take the opportunity to grab my now crunchy eggs. Put her down since she's fast asleep and inhale them before she wakes up for round two. Delicious. She gives me 40 minutes of respite between around 5.30 a.m. and 6.10 a.m. So I get some more reading done until she wakes up for another feed, then rinse and repeat. All that milk has to go somewhere and so I gave her a quick nappy change before delivering the pink burrito to her mother around 6.40 a.m. so I can find refuge somewhere comforting, like the gym. Nope. On the way out though, there is some cleaning up to do which I polish off and then it's off to train chest and triceps today. On the way, I make notes about what I've just read and how I might apply it to my own life and business ventures. For that, I organized my life using Notion, which I was quite skeptical of at first when I started using it, but it's actually been a game changer to just not forget stuff that I need to do and be generally more organized. Once I get to the gym, I do my stretches. I schedule my exercise program into six week chunks with three different Fortnite blocks. The five, the 10 and the 15 rep ranges. That keeps my muscles on their toes, not knowing what to expect and helps me alternate between strength and hypertrophy training. Today I'm doing five rep ranges, so I'll be working on the heavy side. I start with bench press, warming up slowly to my final weight of 44 kilos on each side. Managed to pick up a spectator who definitely thought I was going to drop the weights on myself and congratulated me afterwards for staying alive. It's the small wins. Next is incline, which I get up to 90 kilos on the barbell and do three sets of five reps there. Then go straight to chest flies. Not really sure what weight to go for and thought I was close enough to the bottom to just try and stack it. Was quite happy to get three sets of five for the full stack, but my form did suffer slightly on that. Then finished up with weighted dips with a 26 kilo dumbbell. It's good to have this record of what weights I could do based on training before being a dad, which will help me monitor the inevitable decline from here onwards. Now it's time to leave the gym and finish off the notes from earlier. I would record me doing that, but my phone was otherwise occupied. 
recording me. When I get home, I get a sneaky protein shake in, spill half the powder on the counter, take my lunch out of the fridge with a banana and drop the yogurt on the way. I put my lunch away, then check on the burrito and take a very cold shower. That mixed with the gym makes me feel energized and ready for the day. Give myself a quick comb and a touch of Old Spice, get my shoes on and the rest of my clothes and then set out at around 8am, trying to get to work for 8.30. I did for a bit of time take the e-scooter but I'm choosing to drive because there is a bit less traffic now. Nope. I've gotten quite some pressure to change my car as it is pretty small but I am still a junior doctor so maybe I'll get that as a gift for myself once I finish training in August. Now today I've got a meeting with a company that I'm building some AI software with so uh, hopefully it goes well. I'm a bit nervous about that. Also running like three or four minutes late. It better not be traffic, but knowing London, it probably will be. Well, I'm stuck in traffic, so might as well eat a banana, because what else do you do when you're stuck in traffic? And also late. Now it's very easy for this commute to work in the morning to become dead time, where you just listen to music or, you know, just fall asleep again but I'd like to use it to think about what I really want to achieve with the day um, which I call a daily highlight so today for example um, I really want this meeting to go well um, and then I've got a secondary highlight which is that um, I want to be able to do this day in the life video for you guys so you can see uh, what life is like as a new dad on their first day back after paternity leave. Although, you know, it doesn't feel like much of a gap, I have to say, because as beautiful as uh, little Layla is, she sure is a handful. <laughs> um, but she pays it back infinitely, so that's fine. Well, I would say that, wouldn't I? I'm in the car on the way to work, and bless my, my poor wife, Rosa, is at home dealing with her. I hope she does well today as well because it's going to be the first day that she's all alone so it's as much about her as it is about me. We have this meeting in the morning between 8.30 and 9.30 is to discuss any psychiatric patients, any complaints, any um, safeguarding cases, uh, any problem with children um, that other people in the surgery need to be aware of. Uh, any changes in guidelines or procedures, very important that all of those get communicated. Um, so I will be able to make that meeting. Nighttime with newborns is very difficult because, you know, they need to wake up so frequently to feed again and again. So um, it's really important that we try to get a new night routine that worked for us because in the first week it was horrible. So we were both sleeping in the same bed. She was waking up every you know one and a half to two hours. Um, neither of us were getting good sleep. We would be staying in bed for like 12 hours and still not feel rested um, because we were waking up so frequently. So right now our solution to that is um, she's managed to get to a point where she'd wake up around twice a night. She wakes up once around two to three o'clock in the morning and then once again around five as you saw this morning. So we sleep in separate beds. I can do the feed and the nappy changes on the second wake up. Uh, my wife does the, the first one and she sleeps in the same room as little Layla. Um, the, me being able to, to feed with expressed breast milk on the bottle is a game changer because before when it was just my wife being able to feed um, she would have to wake up every single time that Layla wakes up but now uh, you know I can take some of that burden off of her and then she can take some of the nappy changes off of me so that you know we both of us aren't waking up every time she wakes up I think that that is a huge help to us. 
When getting to work, I always treat the receptionists. It's important to keep them on side and they made my life a whole lot easier when I was doing my exams. They helped book in the right patients for my clinic and informed them that they would be recorded to make sure that they were happy with it. I know many people who didn't have this same support and found it more difficult, so definitely lucky to have them in the team. This first meeting I couldn't record as it is loaded with confidential information. It lasted for an hour and we spoke about any new clinical problems with the patient and how the practice was doing on metrics like prescribing spend, chronic disease and drug monitoring. It's nice to know as a surgery we were meeting our targets. Sometimes people tell you there isn't really a team feeling in GP but that definitely hasn't felt like the case in my current surgery. Your experience can differ so much depending on where you work though. After that morning meeting on Wednesday I have a tutorial that is used for education and training with my supervisor uh, and we have another trainee who is doing the exam I just did so I'll, I'll be supporting him by reviewing his cases for submission. We need to record our consultations with the patient's consent and finish the whole consultation within 12 minutes then get marked on three domains data gathering, clinical management, and communication skills. That includes things like, did you involve the patient in your management plan? And did you understand what the patient wanted to get out of the consultation? These things are very important in GP is if my patients don't feel they've been listened to, then they will either just come back or not take the medications that I prescribe them. In GP, 50% or more medications aren't even cashed in for the medicine so we have a lot to improve on that front. Then was my artificial intelligence automation meeting which I can't release too much information about because it's covered by a non-disclosure agreement but I will say that I love being in GP because of the opportunity to improve things uh, where you see problems around you that could be automated and AI is giving us a powerful new technology to apply to new contexts. Pretty exciting. That meeting did run over into my lunch, which meant I only got 20 minutes, which isn't usual. We usually have an hour, but it was nice to catch the back end of lunch. Our team always has lunch together, which makes a difference to get that team feeling and discuss difficult cases you've experienced or show each other baby photos. Then it's straight to the afternoon clinic which was mixed telephone and face to face. It's nice to have that on this first day back as it was quite packed and the telephones usually provide some light relief and are easier to deal with than face to face problems. That's because they tend to only have one issue whereas the face to face is sometimes have several. When that happens with me, I ask patients to list all the problems at the beginning that they would like to discuss and then we would prioritize the top three to discuss during that appointment and park the others for another time. If you try and squeeze too many problems into one appointment, which is 10 to 15 minutes, you end up rushing and then doing a patient a disservice, which you absolutely don't want to do. Uh, and I've definitely fallen into that trap of trying to do too much before um, and it just doesn't work. The clinic finished at 4 p.m. and I had admin to do, which includes dealing with clinical systems that we have like Docman, Emis Web, medication requests and pathology reports, making sure nothing outrageous is present on the test results. One of my patients ended up having a high potassium on the test results here, so I had to action that straight away as potassium is the most dangerous electrolyte to be out of range since it so closely relates to heart rhythm. On cardiac surgery, if we wanted to stop the heart, we would actually give high potassium straight into the heart and it would just stop. With the plan to reside later, of course, it's just easier to stitch the heart when it's not beating. Although some cardiac surgeons decide to skip that step altogether and just operate while the heart's beating. Pretty crazy. David, yeah. Yeah. superstar. See? Thank you. See, this is what you get when all the people watching become a GP trainee, and their receptionist asks them to do a prescription. What should they say? They should say yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> we will do. Absolutely. You say yes, and then you say, "Can I get you a tea or a coffee, please?" <laughs> and maybe some chocolates. Trust me. And then you get spring rolls. First day back after paternity leave, and. Oh, that was tough. The fact that I squeezed that meeting in the middle of the day 
meant that I had a bit more admin um, towards the end of the day. So I had to kind of stay a bit later than normal. Um, so because technically we're supposed to start at 8.30, so I should have finished by uh, 4.30 and finished around 5. I have to say that's rare considering like usual GP workloads um, I tend to get off on time uh, so it was a bit surprising that I finished late but you know considering I've been off for two weeks and there was a little bit of backlog and some catching up to do and I kind of wanted to stick around and <laughs> chat to the receptionists for a bit at the end and show them some some baby photos everyone everyone was asking me for baby photos and apparently my job for this evening is to get more baby photos <laughs> because 20 aren't enough i'm excited to get home see how rosa's doing traffic 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 Hello. Yeah, good. It's like new and stuff. Now Layla is currently being fed, so I cannot show you exactly what's going on. But it it seems like mom is okay. Is mom okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Let's see. Okay. And and is Layla okay? Yeah, she's very hungry. <laughs> I mean, she sounds very hungry. Her thighs are chubbier than when I left. How much have you been feeding her today? <laughs> All the milk. I'm glad to hear there's, there haven't been any disasters. <laughs> One of the unexpected things about being a dad is just how wholesome it can be looking at my daughter. I never would have thought it. it's pretty cool. Although my endearing thoughts here were interrupted by a loud poop. Nothing works up an appetite like nappy changes, so I cooked up a snack of a halloumi flatbread, stuck the flatbreads in the air fryer for two minutes, add hummus, red pepper with cumin seeds, rocket and halloumi, and I'm ready to do some work on the channel. Usually I'll spend this time either recording a video or replying to comments or planning future videos and shorts. I find it quite fun and when it doesn't feel like work, then I just do it without having to think too much until the next nappy change. Then back to work for the next stretch. Another thing is this time in the evening is important to me as a doctor in London as I don't think our salary is enough to live what I would see as a comfortable life for me. I would want my daughter to go to private school and pay for childcare. Just a full-time nursery in my area is £2,000 a month and my current salary after tax is £3,500 with a rent of £1,750. So you can imagine that money I bring in really doesn't go very far once you add up all the costs. I'm always spending the time to think how can I supplement that so that I'm not exchanging my time for money anymore and working on a business system that can provide value instead. I really enjoy being a doctor and it is rewarding but more from a personal rather than financial perspective. Perspective, hence all the strikes that have been happening and people leaving to Australia. Many people ask if it's still worth coming to the UK and I think that it is if you like the lifestyle of London and you have other income to support you. If you're looking to be comfortable with your salary though then another option may be better. I tend to work like this up until around 8pm when I usually get the evening going. Right now we've been having these ready meals from the Mindful Chef that work on creating high quality delivery meals that you can microwave. The less we need to worry about with a new baby, the better. They've actually been really good using whole grains and are flavorsome. My favorite so far has been the chicken tikka masala with brown rice. So I get these microwaved, then get set up for the evening. Right now we're watching Breaking Bad, which we're totally obsessed with. A bit behind the curve, but better late than never. There were a few interruptions with Layla needing a nappy change and some cuddles, but it was a pretty smooth and chilled evening. Uh-oh. 
Did you eat all the ice cream? No, it was mummy. I managed to put Layla to rest, then do my night routine, which is the same as my morning routine, just with a night collagen moisturizing cream instead of the SPF I'd use in the morning. I get to bed by about 10 p.m. where I go to a different bedroom to Rosa and the baby so I get a good rest ready for the next work day tomorrow. The big question is how has my day changed since becoming a dad? Find out by clicking this video now.